Hi, I'm Jonathan Chester, the CEO and co-founder of Bitwage, the leading provider of Bitcoin and crypto payroll, invoicing and benefits, and I'm happy to be here at Reimagine. Hello and welcome to Reimagine 2021. This is our one year anniversary and 10th edition of our conference. Uh, super excited uh, to be doing this for you know over 12 months, it's been great. Uh, we host these events as a monthly uh, series, bringing you nothing but the best projects, bright minds and leaders in the space. We've been fortunate enough to invite many talented individuals and teams to come speak with us, providing updates, insights and all the above that's happening in crypto. I'll be your host today, Adam from the Mousebelt team where we focus on early stage investments through our accelerator, or providing development support to a growing number of projects, as well as education within the Mousebelt University program. Um, our main objective and goals are pretty simple. Uh, it's increasing adoption, use cases, and real world applications. Uh, that's kind of the whole point of Reimagine is just to highlight our colleagues, our partners, um, everybody that's working hard um, you know, in the industry for, for years. Um, so I'll go ahead and like kind of shut myself off uh, enough of talking on my end. Um, I'm, I'm joined here by Jonathan, CEO and co-founder of Bitwage. How you doing, man? Welcome to the show. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Good, good, man. So we've been rocking this conference, man, for, for over about, uh, yeah, 12 months. And it's just snowballed. Um, obviously, there's a lot of demand. Uh, Bitcoin's going crazy. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the market is, is positive right now with a lot of sentiment. And just looking forward to this discussion. Um, you guys provide an awesome solution. And I'm happy to, like, talk about it and, and really kind of really elaborate on Bitcoin, how close Bitcoin taps into our everyday lives. So first of all, everybody has their own journey. They fell down the rabbit hole. What's cool about Bitwage and, and not only Bitwage, but yourself, um, super early like supporters started building, got involved. But what's your Bitcoin story? How did you get into Bitcoin? Like what, what led you into the space? Sure. Yeah. So I first got into Bitcoin in 2013. And when I was learning about Bitcoin, I was working at Oracle and it was a little bit of a monotonous job that I was working over there. So I said, I want to learn about all the new technologies that are happening in the world. And I came across Bitcoin in a TED talk about the future of money. In that TED talk, I learned about the financial sovereignty, uh, international payments, banking the unbanked, more efficient ways of moving money globally. And I thought this, this is really interesting. I want to get, I want to learn more. I want to get into this. So I spent about a month reading everything I could about, about Bitcoin. And there wasn't a whole lot back then. So I read the white paper. I watched Andreas Antonopoulos. That was, that was really about it. And I came oh. out this obsessed Bitcoin guy at uh, Oracle telling everyone, Hey, you got to buy Bitcoin. You got to buy Bitcoin. And the price of Bitcoin was was surging from two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars, and I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy!" And I and and I felt affirmed in my belief when I was telling people to buy. Of course, if you don't know what happened after that in two thousand fourteen, <laughs> there was a crash, and the price went from like a thousand dollars to three hundred. But at that point, I was a huge believer, and I was kind of this crazy Bitcoin guy at Oracle. So my friends at Oracle introduced me to a colleague there who is also a crazy Bitcoin guy, but over at the technical side of Oracle. We got together and we said, this is going to be the future. Um, no one is addressing the world of business disbursement, salary payments, paying freelancers, gig workers using Bitcoin. And this, if Bitcoin is going to be a financial product of the future, someone's going to have to do it. And that's how we got into the space. Did you think you were like way too early, too late on time? I mean, that like, so I came across Bitcoin in 2013 too. I was working at the bank at that time, at the private bank. And yeah, uh, a client was going to purchase like a hundred grand worth of Bitcoin. And I'm like, whoa, like, what is this? Right. Um, and you obviously got it like super quick. Um, did, and, and before we kind of get into like, you know, what Bitwage is, though, 
were, were you thinking, yeah, well, like you were late to the game on time because you went into it with the sort of building like super early, right? Like people are just coming into the space, depending on who you ask, 2017, 15, 14, whatever. You came in before Ethereum. Yes. Yeah. When, when I was doing my research, there was no Ethereum white paper. Totally. Um, I actually got to meet Gavin Wood and, and Vitalik after the white paper was dropped at like this small hacker house in the tenderloin of san francisco that's why that's that's my cto's old old place he lived there too and vitalik was pitching him ethereum in 2014 oh, okay everybody was, everybody maybe i was, was like, i was at that place yeah dude um, everybody everybody was like uh you're crazy like we kind of get it but like that's nuts anyways don't mean to interrupt but, but i thought i was late yeah because when i was there brock pierce was around roger vera was around you know all these big names and i felt like i was late now, now I think I'm I'm the second of you know the four waves that that uh, that that brought entrepreneurs and and retail investors into the space. Um, so what are those now, four waves? Now everyone thinks I was early, but back then I thought I was late. What are those four waves like Bitcoin, Ethereum? All no, season? I don't think of, I think of it more in terms of the bubbles, the cycles. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My cycles. Yeah, yeah. Um, I should say the cycles because totally with each cycle brings in a whole new set of fresh eyes who, who have strong belief. Of course, when the cycles crash, maybe 50% or 75% of the new people leave, but it still leaves this new core group of believers who, For sure. who, who move forward. And um, <clears throat> which is some good points. And I'll talk about that because that's kind of why we got into an incubator accelerator kind of model for that reason. We were in it before the booms, the bus, you know, everybody raising off of white papers and like under delivering. And, yep. But we, we, we saw the technology ride and, and believed in it and seeked out those teams or, or had them seek out us that were actually, you know, understood it um, and not kind of just aiming for the moon, but kind of realistic, like, you know, like certain things can, can work, you know, or, or at least have a good, good idea. So what, so what is it about Bitcoin? Like you think that, like, what do you think it's real impact is um, you talked about the unbanked uh, we're talking about salaries. We're talking about kind of this peer to peer decentralized aspect of it. What excites you about, I guess, or it could be the technology too. What excites you about Bitcoin in general? So in my opinion, the, the most valuable part of Bitcoin and the blockchain is this concept of censorship resistance we have never before been able to hold our money digitally without relying on a third party. So this is the, the big innovation that, 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 that blockchain brought to the table. And what that ultimately leads to, it, in the short term, Bitwage is, is offering services that helps companies pay their workers globally with the single click of a button, whether it's in Bitcoin, in stable coins or like fiat to fiat currency using Bitcoin as the intermediary. And this idea that uh, we have permissionless usage of Bitcoin allows us to remove intermediaries from an international transfer and gain efficiencies. So people around the world are able to get paid faster, cheaper, uh, and in ways that perhaps help them hedge against their own corrupt local governments that are printing money in ways that essentially cause inflation. Totally. Um, and that brings me to the second point, which is that it is a hedge against inflation, right? Bitcoin is naturally deflationary. It's yep. poised to become digital gold. In fact, it's, it's better than gold in virtually every way as a store of value, uh, especially in, in the digital world. So, and we actually have seen this over the years of working at Bitwage, when there were local uh, or global political or economic instabilities, we saw price rises in Bitcoin. Let me give you some examples of this. If we look to uh, India demonetization, there, I think it was in 2016 when uh, the prime minister decided to remove the two largest bills out of circulation in India, which represented 80% of the monetary supply. And there was a huge cash shortage everywhere. The price yeah. of Bitcoin rose 40% locally, which means that people in our business who were getting paid in India were getting 40% more of their income if they used it. Yeah. 
Similar thing happened in Brazil when the president was caught for being corrupt and removed from office. Similar thing happens in Argentina from time to time. Totally. And in fact, it's, it's happening right now where what, what's happening with COVID is creating a huge economic crisis and you can get this huge premium by receiving your salary in, in Bitcoin or, or stable coins. Um, and we can also look at it from a macro global level. Uh, when you look at how the 2017 bubble started, you actually go back to 2016. And there were two big things that happened in 2016 that affected the global markets, which was it was the end of the Chinese, um, the end of the Chinese stock market crashes, and we also had Brexit. So both of these events, you can see that the global prices of Bitcoin uh, were rising, and the and and eventually that rising continued and moved into the 2017 bubble. Yeah, um, and then if we look at today and the cycle that we're in right now and how we got Bitcoin to go to almost 70K was it all started with COVID and the Fed printing 25% of our monetary supply last year. Totally. So seeing these things gets me excited because today we already see the efficiencies of using it internationally, but tomorrow it's going to be this this natural uh, inflationary hedge that everyone will have access to and everyone will be able to control uh, wherever they live, regardless of whether they're, they have a benevolent or corrupt government. So you, so you see it in two ways. You see it kind of uh, being able to transfer value um, peer to peer uh, rather quickly, middlemen cut out. And then you also see it as time rolls on as just a, um, an alternative, uh, fee, you know, alternative to fiat and have, having some options in times of volatility, in times of, you know, financial distress, depending on where you're at. Um, what was your journey like in 2013 to kick off the, to kick off Bitwage one? And then what was the reception in terms of, Hey, like we have this solution, uh, you know, for, for offering Bitcoin, um, what were the discussions there? Like that's so early on for you to start building something when it wasn't really adopted. I mean, it's still not adopted, right? We're, we're in the space. It obviously has hit mainstream. Now we see it on tickers on CNN, Bloomberg, like it, it's here. Um, but, but back then, like, what was that experience like to be pitching a, a, a company around crypto when it was literally, obviously it came out in 2009 um, or yeah, you know, after the financial crisis, and then, um, yeah, and then you guys were born in 2013. Like, yeah, well, what was uh, what were those discussions like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we today, we have both a B2B product, which is where a company can sign up and, and, and pay their workers through us. And we have a B2C product where actually the worker can come up directly and they can receive their wages in us. So like you could sign up and get part, you know, 10% of your wage in Bitcoin. But how did that come about? Yeah. So we started with just the B2B product. Totally. And in 2014, what we realized is that we were way too early for this B2B product. For sure. Because companies, they didn't really know about Bitcoin. It's like, oh, I heard that it's for hackers and drug lords and these kinds of things. So it was very hard. I mean, our first customer was a B2B customer, but it wasn't yeah. getting the traction that we wanted. But we knew that there was this big group of people who, who wanted to receive their wages in Bitcoin. And so we said, how do we address this? And we figured out, okay, let's create a B2C product where essentially people can get access to a direct deposit account. And you go to your payroll provider and you say, hey, switch 10% or 50% of my wages to go into that account. And then it hits us. We convert it into Bitcoin and send it to whatever wallet that, that you want. So directly to your own ledger or your mobile wallet or your Coinbase account or whatever. Um, and that was really what became quite popular in 2014. And then in 2015, we noticed that while in the people, people in the US are maybe getting $500 to $1,000 every month, people internationally were getting their entire paychecks through us. And we realized that this was a result of the fact that you can gain efficiency by using Bitcoin as a medium of exchange to move money from one country to another. So we wrapped that into an international payroll product. And then fast forward to 2020 when COVID hit, and we saw 
not just the cryptocurrency industry growing, but the, the, the growth of remote work. And a lot of companies were hiring internationally, but also looking for new kinds of benefits domestically that were future-proof, remote work benefits, because now things like bring your doctor to work day or commuter benefits don't matter. And we now today see a, a, a almost a 50-50 split between our B2B and our B2C business. So it's actually wow. become much more popular uh, as a result of these, these changing trends um, that are that are that are in our favor. What were some of the what were some of the signals or data or or trends that you see that you saw out uh, internationally? Because you know, I think everybody here in the states uh, or developed countries, um, you know, regions geographically, like it, it might be a little bit slower to adopt. Although you know, there it, within those populations are definitely crypto holders. But on the grand scheme of things, uh, if, if if you've been in this space, you understand that a lot of these other countries definitely uh, leverage crypto, as you mentioned, as you alluded to at the beginning of like, you know, the government, the politics, the, the currencies, the hyperinflation, um, all of these regions, it's just kind of not, you know, it's not suitable for, for their local, um, you know, citizens and all that. What were some of the things that you kept track to like identify and target some of these markets? So outside of what I what I, what I had mentioned, which is that these people were were yeah. getting their entire wages, I mean that was that was actually our big our big indicator totally. was was yeah. that, and then it was just okay, which which markets to target? And is that and inbound? Are you talking about inbound? Like people are just coming people to people were just like, yeah, we totally. want that. Yeah. We 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 want this solution. Does Crazy. someone have it? And they came to us, right? Yeah. Um, and it, it's still it's still, it's still mostly that way how how our business grows, um, and um, and what we're seeing today, the trends. So some interesting trends that we're seeing today, it, when we look at the U.S. versus the international market, is that in the U.S. people tend to diversify more. We have Bitcoin, Ether, and maybe a couple other crypto, and people will do a, a, a mostly a diversity between Bitcoin and Ether. Um, when people are getting their paychecks, they're usually not, not ga- you know, gambling on the really small market caps or just looking at the top, top ones. But then when we look internationally, people are not even doing Ether. People are not getting paid in Ether. They're getting paid in Bitcoin and in stable coins. So stable coins is a, is a huge trend for us, especially in countries that, ha- that, are, that are being hit with high levels of inflation, such as, such as Argentina. But there are other countries out there that are, that are starting to pick this up that are inflationary, um, ha- have high rates of inflation. And I actually see stable coins as a stepping stone totally. for the world of crypto, because there, there are actually two big barriers to entry for, for Bitcoin. I'm a big Bitcoin um, believer. And there are two main barriers to entry for it. One is the volatility, but the other is private public key cryptography. Right. These are the two main things. And when you get paid in stable coins, you're actually solving the volatility issue and then educating people on public private key cryptography. Whereas a lot of other people are trying to build solutions that create a custody solution. So you don't have to worry about public private key cryptography and allow people to speculate on, on, on volatility. Now, on our side, what's actually happening is we're educating people on how to use this. So it, if at some point in the future, we see that there's so much money being printed by the US Fed that we're, that inflation is not 5%, but 10% or 15%, people will then say, oh, what's an alternative to the dollar to store my money? And if, they, if Bitcoin starts looking like it's stable compared to the dollar and people already know about public private key cryptography and know how to manage their, their money. It's a very easy switch from that. Um, and that's, that's actually how I see things moving um, in the future. And how, how I'm trying to highlight kind of the, this, I'm trying to highlight the, uh, the seamless solution here sure. of like how you guys are actually adding value and contributing to the, the crypto community, not only well, actually not even the crypto community, but yeah, those that are that are super interested. Um, and I think one of the things that you provide is uh, on the back end. Can you explain them? Not like do they have to go to an exchange? 
what do they need to set up? And do they literally just tell their payroll, hey, I want 10% here. Pay wage takes care of it, makes a deposit in my wallet, and, and they're good to go? Yeah. So essentially, you sign up, you connect us to your payroll provider, and then you tell us what your wallet is. And then after that, you ch- tell us the allocation. After that, you, you never have to think about the service again. You, yeah. We have people who set it and forget it. They forget, they, for, they, they, they don't even think about us for, for months or years. We get, cu- we get customers who've been using us for you know, five years and then they come back and they're like, wow, like Bitwage has, has been the best, the best decision of my life, right? Totally. Um, and that's the beauty of this is that for you as the individual user, you don't have the stress of buying on the wrong time because you're essentially doing a DCA. You never have to think about it. It goes directly to any wallet that you choose uh, unlike other solutions that might force you into their custodial setup. And it's just a, a really easy way to, to, to get that, that long-term exposure. Totally. And on the other side of the coin, it's great for the industry as a whole, because we are purely a buy side pressure. We, we only have buy capabilities yeah. for, for, for you. So the, as more people use us, there's more buy side pressure and that, ultimately, you know, helps to mature the asset. Awesome. Yeah, no, totally right. I didn't even think of that in terms of the flow of supply and demand, uh, being able to let the, you know, your your clients and and, and users um, determine for themselves. Hopefully we want them to to buy and hold, but, you know, we Mm -hmm. we understand that. What what do you see in the market today? uh, Still some of the challenges from a UI UX uh, perspective, just from a, um, a usability utility perspective, you've been through it. So you've seen from, 20, from 2013 until now, uh, you know, the challenges, the hurdles, the barriers. Um, what are some of the things that kind of still stick out or, or maybe some of the things that we've actually like come full circle in it? And because there's a lot of apps and there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, different types of products kind of like what you're doing basically to, to make it just easier for an everyday user just to think um, web 2.0 to web 3.0, no real change in terms of how we operate, a few clicks, you know, what we're used to. So what, what have you seen, you know, in the last few years that are either still a challenge or that we've overcome? So what, one of the issues that our B2B product solves for companies to be able to pay their employees in Bitcoin is if a company were to do it themselves, they're are there's a lot of pro, uh, public key management yeah. and there's not a lot of people that know how to deal with that. In addition, there are all sorts of accounting issues when you deal with crypto, all sorts of tax issues. You might need a special accountant to deal with the tax issues. You might need sure. special accounting software to deal with that. And Bitwage automates that entire process. Wow. So you don't have a, you don't need a new accounting software you don't have any difference in tax liabilities and you don't need an administrator that need, that knows anything about crypto. So that, if you were a company that was ever looking to do this, this is the solution that, that makes it so that you, it's a, it's as light of a lift as possible. Um, and, 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 and I think that's a, a beautiful thing because as more companies offer this again, you, you get the buy side pressure that's better for everyone. Um, and ultimately, I think it, it'll lead to more adoption of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency when people say, oh, I can just do 5% of my, my salary in Bitcoin. Why don't I do that? Because it's very daunting to have to buy a Bitcoin. And it's very scary to have to use some sort of yeah. DeFi exchange to get a you know, million dollar micro cap coin or something totally. like that. Um, so that is, uh, I, so I think, good. a huge that's thing that, that, that's going to... Yeah, that's good on the on the enterprise small business. Yeah, that's that's great because those are some of the questions. Like, I don't want to deal with all that, and those are uh, which is why they don't want to integrate it into their current payroll. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think that one of the big things that are cha- that's changing the changing landscape is all around regulation um, in the United States. I think that one of the best things that the United States has done is they've decided to regulate. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, because there's really two, two, two roads to go down. You can either ban something or regulate something, especially in financial services. So they've decided to go down the route of regulation, which is the signal that there is approval for this, which is yeah. great, which is amazing. 
So the next step is what kind of regulation is going to be good enough to protect consumers, to stop terrorist financing, to stop money laundering, but does not uh, stop innovation, that does not make it harder for companies like Bitwage or other companies to, to grow and provide services. At the end of the day, you don't want regulation that's so strict that only the wealthiest large incumbents are able to, to interact because what's going to happen is you're going to create an oligopoly and prices are going to go up over time. And that ends up being bad for the consumer. Uh, and there's obviously going to be less services to make things easier for them. So at the end of the day, I think that this is one of the big things that uh, everyone is looking at in this industry that we hope will be solved the right way, but it's, it remains to be uh, known. What type of uh, companies are looking to integ- or are integrating Bitwage? Is it tech companies? Is it like uh, traditional companies? Just curious to know. Yeah, so there's a wide range of companies that are using us. Um, so obviously we have crypto companies, we have tech startups, but we also get a lot of services companies. So companies where people like their main product is reselling people, right? Account, uh, accounting firms, law firms, marketing agencies, customer support groups, um, software development companies, all these kinds of companies where in, instead of reselling a product, they're reselling people services. We see a, a, a natural um, interest in this. And I think that part of it is because they hire more people internationally. And part of it is because they're just, it's, it's very important for these kinds of companies to offer benefits that differentiate themselves, um, to attract and hold the talent because the talent is the product at the end of the day. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. Um, you know, and, and obviously you're seeing like a lot of growth, right? Um, so are you seeing a lot of growth in people accepting Bitcoin now? Obviously, but like you, you see the numbers, just people are just kind of, uh, you know, I don't know if you can tell, like if there's more allocation, just more people wanting Bitcoin, at least a little bit or, or, or greater allocations kind of, are you able to track some, not track it, but do you see like what the numbers look like? Yeah. So as the price of Bitcoin goes up, we do see that people increase their allocations. Yeah. Um, but uh, the more interesting thing is we, we, for the first time, are seeing Fortune 1000 companies approaching us wow. um, that are exploring this and, and looking to potentially offer this as a solution. So I think that, that that's, that's really big and interesting. And in terms of where things are going, I think that we have begun what I kind of call the snowball effect. The snowball is still small, but it's rolling and it's going to get big and it's going to get huge. And I I think my belief is in the three to seven year range, um, we're going to get to a point. We're going to get to a point. We're going to get to a point where it's an obvious benefit that all companies are offering Bitcoin payroll, that it's just going to be something that is expected from companies like, yeah. Or at least the most innovative companies, For you know, sure. it'll be similar to, like I said, commuter benefits or, or unlimited PTO kind of, kind of options out there. It's going to be, it's going to be a dominant benefit in the marketplace. Are you worried about competition at all? I mean, we've been here since 2014. We're the only company that is fully dedicated to this. So our product is, is, is leagues ahead of what else is out there. And um, I'm, I'm expecting to be able to continue to push the envelope and provide value added services, um, where other companies are not able to. And, um, <clears throat> uh, so we've been talking about Bitcoin, um, and you brought up Ethereum, what, what coins and tokens, uh, do you offer? And then are you expecting to expand that? Yeah. So, so right now, we don't we we don't have very many cryptocurrencies. Um, we only have uh, three cryptocurrencies and four stable coins, um, and we do expect to expand it, but not by a whole lot. And the reason yeah. being that in general, people are not looking to get their salary in 
these smaller coins, again, those are things that people are not trying to employ a, a long-term dollar cost average investment into, but rather just like a one-time buy. Yep. We are looking at some other coins to add because there is some demand, but the interest of Ethereum is not so high. So it's not a, a huge priority for us to add other crypto. Um, maybe something along the lines of, you know, a coin that, um, that is an index coin that matches like the top 10 crypto would be interesting. But then something like that is a security and there's all sorts of security laws around, around something like that. So it gets complicated um, in, in that vein. Um, but uh, we are actively looking at other coins, um, but our strategy is not a strategy like Binance where they're just trying to add everything under the sun yeah we, we don't we don't see as much value from that because that's good for traders not for hodlers which are basically the people that yeah that and it's obviously like a good gateway it's a good fee on ramp right into crypto yeah. uh which you guys are pr providing i think that i think that a more interesting route would be you know the the introduction of more DeFi type items because we we think that you know sort of these staking savings mechanisms yeah. would be attractive to mainstream mainstream people um, um but of course there's there's a lot of risk associated with that so we need to you know do do more due diligence and uh, uh in terms of choosing our partners for that yeah and that was going to be my next question uh which you let into which is DeFi. um yeah. are you looking to and you kind of just alluded to it a little bit um, what do you like about DeFi? You know, you're, you're, you're a crypto, crypto guy. Um, you've seen the, the booms and the busts and then just a lot of like protocols and platforms coming out, you know, providing various solutions to, to, to save, to earn interest. Um, some of them are, are almost, you know, risk-free and obviously some of them are, you know, very risky. You got to know how to like operate it, what to do. Um, have you been following DeFi in general from the personal side? Uh, what, what do you like about DeFi? So just want to take a step back. You said some of it's risk-free, but I, none of it is risk-free. Um, so, so one of the, the, the big things that people don't realize is there's different kinds of risks involved. So there's the, the, the risk that they're solving in DeFi, um, the ones that are quote-unquote risk-free, is they're, risk, they, they, they're removing credit risk around whether or not the person that they loan the money to is gonna pay it back. But there tends to be other kinds of risks that are not taken into consideration, right? There's custodial risk, there's bug risk if it's a smart contract. Totally. Um, and, we, we, uh, and we see this playing out over and over again where when something was considered to be risk-free, it absolutely wasn't risk-free. A company goes out of business, even though they're custody and you can't get your funds back. The smart contract gets breached and, and you know, all the funds get lost. So this totally happens. I think that, that, it's, um, that the true, true DeFi is not ready for mainstream adoption not and right. that people who are going into it need to be people who absolutely understand the risk that they could lose it all. Um, the, the, where I see um, more opportunity is probably these um, not true DeFi, these CeFi type products where you're working with a custodian and you do have to trust the custodian. Um, but uh, the, the, the difference being that it's not a smart contract where hackers have all the time in the world to just attack it all day. And, you know, even, even Gavin Wood made a mistake in one of his smart contracts that lost, you know, millions of people's dollars. So if the person who created Solidity can do it, imagine some Joe Schmo, you know, who created some smart contract, right? Um, but in general, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting, right? Because ultimately what's happening is you're removing, you're removing banks as lenders, right? As intermediaries. Yeah. Um, and uh, a greater percentage of the share on the loans is getting paid back. Um, albeit there is still risk being taken because the 
oh, at the end of the day, you're getting a higher rate from the banks because more risk is being taken. Riskier loans are, 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 are being provided. Um, so I have noticed that a lot of them now, uh, which is interesting, a, a lot of insurance, hmm. I've seen a lot of insurance coverage, which maybe that's, you know, uh, um, in relation to FDIC a little bit. Um, you got to read the fine print though, because I forget exactly what that insurance coverage, you know, you're right. There's a lot of nuances like, um, you know, hack, you know, if they get hacked, you know, they're covered, but for what, you know, X, X, Y, and Z, they're not covered. So it's definitely, you definitely got to read the fine print on that and like understand what's covered and what's not covered. Um, I, I tend to, I tend to, to go on the belief that it's not covered. Um, yeah. If it's in crypto, it's mostly not covered is, is, is likely the situation. Um, I think that, that um, it, 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 in general um, with the, cause there's also decentralized insurance coming out. Yeah. Um, my belief on the decentralized insurance is actually that they um, they probably are not able to assess the risk well enough to 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 to, to give to to charge the right amount. Yeah. Um, so usually taking the insurance is is likely going to be in your favor because they're probably under um, under assessing the risk because there's a lot of unknown risk. Um, but uh, you know, then you have the risk of some sort of huge event that completely depletes that that insurance smart contract. For but sure. in any case, you know, I, I I am partially skeptical of DeFi, but what I do understand is that you know these very reputable custodial entities are providing a product that has some long term potential. That yeah. you know, some of them could become the next Coinbase. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Coinbase has custodial risk, but I trust them. And I think that we're going to see some of these DeFi, CeFi entities that will approach that level of trustworthiness. Is Bitwage safe? Since we're talking about risk, uh, you know, what are some of the, you know, things that you have in place to either prevent or, you know, help, um, help the process, I guess, for not only Bitwage, but, but your users, you know? Yeah, so Bitwage has processed over $100 million in transactions, and we've never had any um, cybersecurity failure. Um, we've been doing this since 2014, so we've been around for a while. Um, I can't go into specifics, yeah. right, yeah. of how our cybersecurity program works. Um, but one of the key differences between us and other entities is that we are non-custodial, right? And so... Um, and, and we're not even a wallet. There is no, there is no, it's not even like there's a wallet that, 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 that we're holding on your behalf. So at any particular time, technically the highest risk that, that you have as an individual is that one paycheck that goes through us. And that is much different than everything that you have All your in assets. a DeFi wallet, yeah. right? Um, yeah. and, and while, and the thing is with those DeFi wallets, they're a much bigger honeypot, right? Because all the time they're getting bigger and bigger and they have all these assets under management. For us, if, if there's a zero day attack, um, it's going to be just that day of, of payroll that's compromised. Limited. So yeah. it's a much smaller attack vector, not that much money uh, for them to, 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 to really get on any particular day. So it makes us less of a target and uh, there's less risk involved in us. And, you know, of course, we, we set ourselves up, align ourselves to ISO and NISO security standards um, and, uh, you know, have, have had our programs audited by, by cybersecurity professionals. So Nice. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, you bring up a good point. Not, not all the assets are, are tied up, um, <clears throat> you know, into a, whole, into a whole basket. A couple more questions and we'll, we'll wrap it up here. You guys have a 401k program as well? We do, we do. It's in beta. It's in yeah. beta, um, but uh, the the goal is to is to make it sort of a, a live and scalable product by the end of this year. Um, nice. So it's really cool. You basically hold Bitcoin directly in a four hundred one k. You can do it with pre tax dollars, or you can do it with Roth. Roth wow. being that you'll never pay taxes on it, yeah. no matter how much the gains are. So it's going to be huge, and there's going to and 
you know, the ultimate vision for that is you're just going to have this easy, awesome, single sign-on um, access to your Bitcoin 401k and your Bitcoin payroll. So it's all managed in the, in the same place. Um, nice. Yeah, that's great. No, that's great. I mean, I think this is a long-term play. So the fact that you're offering that, you know, that, that's amazing. Um, lot, lot, last question here. Um, I've seen, uh, I was reading something that you guys are working with athletes and, 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 you know, various sports and stuff like that. What has been uh, the push there? And, and obviously there's some demand coming from these athletes and even beyond right in the industry, the celebrities, the, the artists, uh, but, but we'll, we'll stick to Bitwage here. It looks like, yeah, you guys are signing on some, some like soccer players or something like that. Yeah. So we signed on, we signed on um, one of the team members from uh, Toronto FC, which is uh, his name is Akara. Um, so Toronto FC is actually part of the U S major league soccer group. And it's, it's the highest paying uh, team there. So Akara came on, he's this, you know, amazing, brilliant guy. Um He's from Nigeria, so he actually gets paid in Bitcoin and then uses Bitcoin to, to, to pay his family, to, to send money to his family back home. So there's wow. that international piece. Um, so that's great. And we have lots of interest, not just from, from uh, sports people, but from people that are influential in music and movies and this side of the world as well. So um, hopefully there will, be, there will be more that I can, I can talk to soon about that but the the cool thing about these influencers coming on and getting getting paid is that they are able to leverage their networks um to to educate people about about bitcoin and cryptocurrency the idea being that they are just another step in bringing us to mainstream adoption nice yeah no i think I think it's here. I mean, we see NFL athletes, you know, NBA, right. Asking for, for their, uh, their salaries in, in Bitcoin. Some have been approved, some haven't, some have circled back. So it's kind of cool. I mean, we're seeing a lot of people obviously believing in it. You're a believer. I'm a believer. Where can people uh, learn more about Bitwage? Yeah. The best place is just www.bitwage.com. You can check us out on Twitter at Bitwage. We have pretty active Twitter. Um, and uh, we also run a Bitcoin for Business Clubhouse uh, event every Thursday. Nice. Um, uh, you can find me at John Chest on t- Twitter and uh, at Jonathan Chester on Clubhouse. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I'll have to check that out myself. Yeah. And then, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of students and, and people all over the world. Like, what would you say um, to some of our university population that, looking to get into the space you know uh do they they might feel like they're too late as well they missed the boat um you know they're not technical enough um do you have any kind of like quick insights into you know some of our our future population that that's going to be potentially working in the space that might be hesitant um you have any kind of like positive reinforcement for them to to kind of continue on this path into into bitcoin yeah i mean i think that we're still early days today I think that we we will have started to mature once Bitcoin is is truly competing with gold, and even then, it's going to be something that's worth investing in because it's a deflationary currency. It may not have you know the potential to do twenty x or or yeah. or fifty x like it has today, but it'll store your value much better than holding your your money in dollars. So. Starting today, getting your page, getting a paycheck in Bitcoin is a great way to, to, to start. Um, if you're looking to be more entrepreneurial, I think that one of the great ways to do that is to go to meetups or you know clubhouse rooms, right? Totally. Um, go to go to events. This is the best way to get involved. That's how I started actually. So after after. I did my my TED talks and went down the rabbit hole. A lot of things I was doing was just going to meetups, meeting people in the industry. There tends to be high quality people that are either there or or go on to do something high quality, right? Um, I've met I've met many people who are you know starting um, NFT gateways, uh, uh, starting you know multi billion dollar uh, market cap coins who I met at meetups in 2013, 14. So it's still early. It's a great place to go and, and meet people. 
I still host, I mean, well, post COVID, but you know, pre COVID, uh, yeah, two, two to four meetups. Of, uh, I would host two to four meetups at our office monthly. And then I was going to like two to four meetups every week. And I met most of my contact hundred percent of like my relation, you know, pretty close to a hundred percent of my relationships that way. Yeah. Um, and it's been a great experience. And now I just went to one on Friday and uh, been to two in the last like three weeks. They're starting to pop up a little bit, kind of excited. Hopefully things settle down on the, on the, on the COVID side that for us to enjoy this, but um, no, man, Jonathan, I appreciate you taking time out, time out of your day to talk about bit wage. Um, you know, the value add that you guys bring not only to, to businesses, but, but to customers and then, you know, mass adoption, like, you know, supporting, the industry uh, supporting all of us that, you know, want to hold Bitcoin and you guys provide a way that, that we can do that, you know, pretty quick and efficiently and effectively and safely. So um, without further ado, yeah, go ahead and, uh, you know, we hope to have, if not you back, somebody else from your team. We do this every month. Um, so we look forward to extending another invite and bringing you guys back and, and getting updated, um, you know, as you guys grow and, and we all, and the space grows in general. So um, again, thank you for, for coming and we hope to see you again. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Reimagine 2021. You can catch all of our interviews on YouTube. They're all free. Hopefully, you're enjoying the conference. And uh, check out BitWedge to get some uh, Bitcoin in, in your pocket. Have a good one. Thank you. Mm-hmm.